Eyewitness News reporter Alicia Nieves spent the day in central Puerto Rico surveying the conditions there, and she joins us live tonight from San Juan to show us what she found. Alicia. Well, Yuki and Jess, I have used the word devastation over and over in my live reports for the last 48 hours. And I know it may seem like that word is being overused, but it's really the only way to describe what we are seeing. And what's making matters worse right now is there's growing concern over rain and possible storms headed over the island. Storm clouds are rolling into Puerto Rico. The island is now under a flash flood watch, the last thing it needs right now. So many are still reeling from the aftermath of Hurricane Maria. That was scary. Uh, the stove, it went out with everything out. They blow the the, doors stove, out. the they, stove blew out the house. They, 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 yeah, it came out of the house. 30 minutes southeast of San Juan, in Caguas, Wilfredo Bonilla told us how Hurricane Maria ripped his home apart. And 10 days after she devastated and nearly decimated this city, he told us how he's struggling to survive. It takes him eight hours to get $20 worth of gas to power a generator for his family. He doesn't have time or the energy to get water. So he drinks it from this hose, even though he's not sure it's safe. Driving through Caguas, this is one of the lines that we saw for water. The line is at least the length of a football field. It took us exactly one minute and 38 seconds to walk to the front, but people here are waiting for hours, only to find out that when they get up here, there's no more water or ice. It's something like unbelievable. Joe Lopez waited on the line for seven hours, like so many, and says the only thing getting him through is faith. We have to pass all those. I mean, problems, but God is with us. Yeah. I mean, that's the only way. To give you an idea of how the suffering here is so closely connected to our viewing area, everywhere we've been, we found people with family worried about them in the greater Philadelphia area. In fact, that's the case for both Wilfredo Bonilla and Joe Lopez. Bonilla hasn't been able to reach his in Berks County. He's hoping they see this. It's hard over here, but we're still living. That message that you just heard is really at the heart of why we are here. In Pennsylvania and New Jersey, it has the third and fourth largest Puerto Rican population in the United States. That's hundreds of thousands of people in our viewing area with a direct connection here with loved ones here that they're worried about. So whatever we can do to get information back to them, get a message back to them, or even a call, that's what we're trying to do here. Yeah, and Alicia, you guys certainly trying to be the go-between for people here and then in Puerto Rico, but what is it like for you guys behind the scenes? We know that it's a shortage of water and food and power. Uh, what are you guys doing? Where are you staying? So we br made sure to bring water with us and food with us just so uh, we wouldn't kind of add to the stress here and we wouldn't be in need ourselves. It was a struggle for us to find a place to stay. We finally found a condo where we could stay at, uh, but it has no power. It is really hot, but we do have cold water, and that's been a huge savior for us. <laughs> and at the end of the day, my photographer, Joe, and I can't complain because the places that we have been, people are dealing with far worse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alicia Nieves, photographer Joe Connors, thank you so much. We'll be in touch. Thank you. Be